All right, welcome back. Yeah, this isn't a bike, but this is a thing that goes on a bike. It's called an extra cycle. I'll put a few images up here of what it looks like when it's on a bike. Super hyped to pick this up. I've wanted one for a while. I'm gonna take a look at it, but um, yeah, it should be pretty good. So yeah, first thing I'm gonna do is take these bags off. You can see it's got these kind of cool clips. What it allows you to do is allow the strap to go all the way over to the other side. So you can strap stuff on top. And then you got a big sling pocket here. A little pocket here. And then you got this velcro pocket and then you can carry stuff on the inside here as well this side just comes undone like this i think it was just clipped on this side for some reason it's pretty dirty so what i'm gonna do is take the bags off so you can actually see the actual frame taking the bags off were pretty easy uh, i think there were just some straps on the top and then those bars they're just kind of friction fit they just slide in nothing's bolting them down or anything but I guess most of the weight's on top, so that's why they're designed like that. Basically took all the, the bags off. It was missing one of the straps on the other side, one a little clip. So I'm gonna have to fix that if I want to run three straps. And then this bag also looks like it had a hole in it that someone tried to fix up before. Also these uh, reflectors on the bag that aren't looking too good, too hot either. So I might just rip those off. Um, but yeah, gonna give this a wash. It cleans up all right and then with the board it just has some clips like little hooking clips on the top and the bottom and i think someone just installed that little reflector mount on the back and you can see there's a little bit of a maybe that's a wheel rub on the wood but it's not too bad it's pretty light and this is the extra cycle itself you can post in the video that i took those two bars off they kind of just slot in pretty light aluminum tubing you got your disc brake here if you want to run disc brakes and then canty brakes or v brakes i think this is 700c for some reason when i put a 26 wheel in it doesn't line up properly i chucked the wheel in this is 26 wheel but you can see the v brakes right on the edge so i might have to run run disc or get some adapters for this and then, yeah down here it just says there's no step i'm not sure what that is i might have to look it up online you can see there's some rust here and more rust on the back yeah this is uh 135 spacing for the dropouts for mountain bike and then has a little derailer hanger there as well but yeah overall pretty light construction a little mount here for a stand and then I know you can like put adapters in here or you can put a stand in here as well. And then for the way it connects to the frame, this goes on the rear dropout. But for some reason, there's only just one of these bolts and then this one's missing. So I'm have, gonna have to work something out for that as well. Hopefully I can use an old axle or something, I'll work it out. Little mount here, not sure what that's for. And then I think this sits on the bottom bracket, close to the bottom bracket of the rear stays. And then I think there's a clamp that goes on here. So I'm gonna have to make a clamp as well. But yeah, all in all, pretty cool, pretty light. I'm gonna see how I go with this project. I'm gonna give it a clean and then hopefully uh, brushes up all right. So yeah, just giving it a clean here, taking all the bolts off. You can see this is how the clamping bolt works. Got to find that other one or find a replacement for the other one as well. And then yeah, just taking all the Velcro stuff off, giving a quick spray with detergent and soap. And then I'm gonna give it a brush down to brush all the dirt off. And then basically I just use WD-40 to give it a nice once over. Um, it did have a bunch of rust on one side, but yeah, it's, I think it's pretty old and it's going to be a heavy duty kind of work vehicle, I guess. So I don't mind it being too rough and I'm just going to clean up as best I can and then just run it. I think it's going to get, you know, nicks and stuff on it anyway, because it's uh, going to be a cargo bike. But here you can see I'm just using WD-40 and a wire brush just to get the rust off. And then uh, to protect it, I ended up putting ended up putting a rust converter on there just to seal it off from the elements. But yeah, I think this must have been sitting around for a while. The guy got it off. He said he was going to make it into a project, but then, um, yeah, kids and work got in the way. So he just had it sitting around a bit. But yeah, it seemed like a nice guy. It seemed like he was working on something when I picked it up anyway, so it looks like he had a lot to keep him going. Um, here's the other side. You can see a lot of rust here, but... I ended up using sandpaper, just 600 sandpaper to sand it off. And then, yeah, the rust, rust converter here again. Um, once again, this is uh, poisonous, so just be careful. You just paint on the area. And what it does is it slows the rusting process and creates a nice seal so no air and stuff can get in and then you won't rust. And then here, washing these bags. These bags are pretty filthy. 
but um, yeah, just gave them a quick brush, wash in the sink, using a bit of detergent and soap, just hand wash. I don't think I need to chuck them in the washing machine or whatever, I don't want them to get ripped up. But yeah, I don't know what all that stuff is, it must just be dirt from when, when you're riding and it kind of like flicks up on the bag. But um, yeah, this is probably unnecessary. I'm pretty sure I could just run it dirty, but I may as well give it a clean since I'm cleaning the whole thing. All right, just uh, hung these up here. Um, this is basically cleaned, did as best I could. And I still got to clean these other rails, just the end of those rails, clean them up. But yeah, I'm going to let this dry, wait till there's a little bit more room out here before I do the rest. All right, got to wash these too. All right, all the clips are washed and I just clipped these on. Don't want these flying off. <laughs> All right, this is the next day. I don't know if you can see. They cleaned up all right. They, I think they, they dry pretty quick as well. They're pretty thin, but yeah, it's pretty good. And then yeah, just cleaning up these ends here. It actually cleaned up pretty well considering the rust on it. I think it's because it's all made of, uh, made out of aluminum. So it's a little bit more rust resistant. And then here, just cutting off these little uh, tube, inner tube protector things. Um, but yeah, it wasn't wasn't too hard doing this. All right, that's all done. Basically clean. So yeah, time to put it together. Okay, so I was looking around and I had to find something to replace this. It fits in here, so you can see this bolt is smaller, but then on the outside it's a little bit bigger. Uh, and what I basically am going to try to do is use this old axle, re-axle, and then just cut a little bit off. But the main issue is this is just too small for me to put the bolt through. See right here, it just doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to drill the inside, but I don't know how that's gonna go. But yeah, only one way to find out. Just giving this the old chop, and I just cut it on the thread as a, as a little guide, made it easy just to get the hacksaw down. And then yeah, just hold it. All right, so that's done. And I have a 5.5 here, so we'll see how we go. So yeah, I'd say rigging a little clamp for this was the hardest. I end up using those semicircle spacers from uh, rack mounts just to hold the little pipe in place, or the axle in place. You can see it still doesn't fit here, but I just made sure I went really slow. Um, another thing to be careful of is you might need to spray it with some type of liquid. Usually when you do metal work, there's some type of liquid that stops it from overheating. Um, and that, yeah, that will stop your drill bit from blunt, blunting out. But yeah, it ended up working out. And then here I'm just cutting it to the size of the other eyelet, just using that as a guide. And then, yeah, one thing to be careful about, it gets real hot too. So if it gets too hot, wear gloves. Um, and then I just gave it a quick sand on both sides of the file. But yeah, I was pretty, pretty hyped on this. It worked, worked out well. You can see how it fits in there. Pretty nice. And that's it for that. So yeah, this is just from the Extra Cycle website, one of the old instruction manuals. So it looks like the plate is just on the bottom. See if we can find something similar. So I end up getting some uh, of these stainless steel bolts. They're just a uh, normal Phillips head. But you can see I'm probably going to have to put it in from the inside like that. But yeah, it seems to fit pretty well. And then I'll put a nut here or two. And then I want, I can also just cut it off. So this is the bike I'm going to put it on. And there's a couple of things. I don't know if I should switch this out to a disc so I can run disc on the back. And then I'll take this back rack off. And I'll take the stand off, take the wheel off, take the chain off. And then I don't know if I'm going to change this cockpit at all or change the battery setup. So it's a little bit up in the air at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is try to just get that extra cycle on first and then decide from there. All right, taking the stand off. So yeah, I might end up reusing the stand. However, I think it'd be cool to kind of build a wider one, a fatter one for the extra cycle on the back. I've seen a few around, but yeah, obviously they don't make them anymore, but maybe I can rig something up and taking this back rack off. Yeah, I've been wanting to take that off for a while. I've been running it for a long time. And yeah, this extra, extra cycle came at a pretty good time because my child has grown out of that one seat. And yeah, I was already looking at other options. So pretty lucky that this popped up. Good timing. And yeah, here, just taking up the chain. I was looking for where the original pin was and just popped it out here. 
I ended up just keeping the chain just in case I'm going to reuse it. Here, take off the rear Mac, take off the rear wheel. So yeah, I'm probably going to switch out the wheel for this to run disc on the back because uh, the extra cycle mounts are for 700C for some reason. And then here, just putting it on. You can see it's a little bit uh, fussy if you don't have a, a stand or whatever or a big space. It can get a little bit tricky, but I end up using just a tub to help uh, have something underneath it. All right, I got it on. I just have a disc wheel in the back at the moment, and then these ended up going in pretty sweet. I thought I was going to have issues, more issues than I did, but worked out pretty well. Um, I'm going to fix those up in a little bit. And then the only thing is this kind of just sits on here and there's a clamp that should go along the bottom. So I'm going to try to find a bolt and a clamp to go on here, try to rig something up for this. Seems kind of weird. It's just like metal on metal right here. All right. So what I ended up doing was just use a little bit of tubing right here. And then I'm going to slide this plate, the metal plate I had up the stand. And then this was from the stand too rubber tube bit and then just a bolt and I'm gonna do it just like this just like that and that should fit pretty well here it is from the bottom you can see the big bolt head made it a little bit more stable I end up putting a nylock on here maybe trim this bolt too but yeah pretty psyched overall I think it's gonna be sweet can't really get back much further but uh, you'll be able to see it a bit later on Sure. Moving around the bike is actually quite cumbersome, so I'm gonna add a stand in here for now just to make it a little bit easier to work with. All right, there you go, chucked it on. One thing that I need to work out is I'm running these brake levers for canty brakes, so I just need to make sure these are gonna work with the mechanical disc brakes that I got, otherwise, I'm gonna have to change it up. All right, so double check these. These are only for Canty. I could run one of those little round things that change the cable pull on the back, but I think I might end up changing this to be disc as well. That might be the solution, which means I'll have to take this off, take the brakes off, take this off. This has always been like bugging me a little bit anyway, because this handlebar isn't long enough to fit these shifters and this little th throttle thing. If I take the fork off, I'm gonna have to take the basket and stuff off and rewire it. So yeah, seems like a little bit of work still. You always think it's gonna be easy, but there's always uh, always something. And for the back here, I think I'm gonna put on the eight speed cassette back on here. And I'm gonna put a little disc or rotor in there so it can stop. And these are disc brakes I got, uh, just mechanical disc brakes. And I think they, these are just Cannondale levers. These just need a bit of a clean. I might end up switching these out for the Avid ones I have just to keep them consistent. A little bit of an end of an error for these uh, for these brakes, taking off uh, the cables and stuff. I think we've been running those brakes for a while, but they've definitely held up well. Old XT brakes. Here, just taking off the grips, just using some water and stuff. Comes off fairly easy. Same with the other side. And then, yeah, I'm excited to reposition the throttle as well just to get a better setup for the handlebars and then here taking the canties on the front all right so pretty windy today so i got the mic out again a lot of choices here so if i want to if i'm going to run disc on the back here i was planning to run disc on the front but the issue is the only rigid fork i have is this one and it doesn't have any mounts for a front rack or anything like that so I just have to run a different front rack and then put that somewhere else on the bike. But then I'd have to get new cables, which seems a little bit of a hassle. So I think what I'm going to do is keep this front fork because I've spent time making this rack super solid. I'm going to end up running V brakes on the front and then disc on the back. I think that's the best way for now. And then maybe in the future, I'll switch it out. All right, here just putting on the old uh, XT cassette on here. I think I had this running on another bike. I can't remember what, but behind the scenes I had to take it off and then put this one back on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty light, works pretty well. I think the teeth are in pretty good condition. And then here mounted the Avids. You need a little brake mount thing. I think this is for a 160 brake mount, which I think doesn't fit that well, but we'll see if we can make it work. And then yeah, I was just putting the rotor on just to test it out 
to make sure the brakes work. All right, so I noticed a couple of things. One is if I run this straight flat, this little bit kind of hits on the top, so I might have to run a space or two. And then this 160 or 180 rotated in fit. Yeah, probably should have read that first. I didn't have a 203, so I'm gonna have to get one of those. So halt it for a second. Maybe I can do some of the other stuff while I source that. All right, here's the parts that I'm gonna clean up. These brakes are just, uh, I think they're just basic die comp ones, but I'm gonna put some new pads on them. These look pretty worn. Got these other ones. And then these levers, I'm gonna clean up. Don't know if I'm gonna use these or the Avid ones, but I'll clean them up first, see how they look. I'll probably go with the Avid ones. Um, just because they were donated and they're a little bit more special to me. I checked the brake cable. It's two meters long, so it should be fine. I just hang the cable over the back. It should be fine because my bars are quite forward. And then check the shifter cable. Shifter cable is the same length, so hopefully that should work out and I don't have to get a new one. I did get a new chain and then it should have enough chain to go along the whole thing. All right, just cleaning up these levers and these V-brakes. I just used a brush to brush up all the dirt off and give it a quick clean, gave it a rinse. And then now I'm gonna just drop it in a vapor rust. There's some rust on some of the bolts and stuff. Just wanna give it a freshen up. And then here I've been wanting to take this off for ages, <laughs> this little brake mount. So now I can just fully run it uh, without that. <laughs> so it looks way cleaner, I think. Ended up switching this silver spacer with a black one as well. All right, so I just bit the bullet and got a uh, new motor cable, so I can extend the cable bigger to the back, and then also a throttle cable. So now I'm going to try to work out how to put this thing on the back. All right, here it is. Basically, just got to disconnect the throttle, pedal sensor, and then the motor cable. So just working out where to put this battery. I think the the best way is to have it in this little triangle here where it's kind of out of the way and it's kind of unused space, I think. But I realized when uh, I turn the pedals, you can see here when I turn the pedals, it kind of it's kind of too wide and ends up hitting the pedals. So if I'm riding, it's going to be a little bit annoying. I have to just be careful of that. So I decided to move it. Uh, the other option that we can do is probably just put it on the seat post up here. The weight's a little bit high. Uh, so I don't really want that. It would be cool to mount it somewhere here a little bit lower But I'd have to create a whole new kind of mounting system for it I guess another option would be if I made a bar that goes in between here and then it kind of sits on the brake buses That could be an option as well. All right So I just chucked this on here and to my surprise it actually lines up with both of the brake buses So I'm gonna try fit it like this. I think that's pretty cool. I might have to try to raise it a little bit so it's a little bit to get easier to get on and off but yeah I think it's gonna work all right just chuck this on here it's super solid pretty stoked with this I can't believe it actually worked you can see super tight in there and I think it's pretty stable I think what I want to do is you can see kind of the tilt of it it tilts a little bit up with the battery so I want to find some spaces to see if I can uh, fix the tilt and make it a bit uh, more level. All right, end up finding these little sleeve things, which are part of this brace. They go on like that, and then they go on. Actually, they're from the front rack, and then I got these bolts as well. So I'm going to chuck it on. All right, just mounting it here. Pretty stoked on these spaces. I think they look pretty good as well and just using these longer bolts to mount it on and are working pretty well, pretty straight. And I did take it on and off. The battery was pretty easy and I think it looks pretty solid as well. Just resting on the seat stays there. So yeah, pretty happy with this. I think it worked out well. A little bit more cleaning here, getting uh, the stuff out of the vapor rust. You can see there's still some rust on the brakes. So I just ended up chucking them in the vapor rust to soak for a little bit longer. But yeah, these levers came out pretty clean. And then chucked the tie on. All right, took a while to work out, but this is how I'm gonna set up the cockpit. So I got the grip, I'm gonna run the Avids that I took off the other bike, swapped it with the Cannondale levers. 
This is an LX where you buy on the front. I already sold the bike where it had the LX uh, on the right. So this is just kind of an orphan. So I'm going to use this. And then here I have a friction shifter so I can run the eight speed on the back. I'm going to run the throttle right here, lever, and then grip. That way I can kind of have the main grip just by itself and everything's out of the way. I think reaching this lever won't be too bad if it's right here as well, right next to the handlebar or right next to the, the lever. So yeah, we'll install this and see how it goes. I actually tried so many different shifter and lever combos on this. <laughs> Drove myself a little bit crazy. Uh, but yeah, one of the things is the throttle takes up a lot of room, so I had to work that out. All right, that's basically it. Pretty good here, I think. And then this is this side. I can reach all the levers, pretty good. Here, just checking the grips on. I ended up just using zip ties, putting zip ties on and putting these on dry. It's simply enough just to put four zip ties in and then just rip the zip ties out. And that was basically it. And then here, just cutting down this pedal sensor. I don't need that anymore. Well, I do need it, but I don't need it on the down tube. End up putting it on the seat tube. And then here, just putting on the brake cable. So yeah, standard brake cable works 200 long and then I end up running the housing all the way, the entire way of the, the brake cable. All right, this finally came, so I'm gonna chuck it on. Yeah, not too much to it. This, uh, this brake rotor actually came with bolts, so, but I just end up using old bolts anyway. But yeah, just make sure you put it right way. There's the arrow showing you the direction. And then I just, yeah, chucked it back in the rear drops, make sure it fits inside your brake. All right, don't know if you can see it, but basically, that part in there is hitting a bit. So I just need to chuck a space in here and a space in here just to prop it up. Otherwise, I think it's looking pretty good. So yeah, with those old V brake pads that I had, they had some little spaces on there, some cone washers or I don't know what they're called, but they have a little bit of semicircle allows you to kind of align the bolt a little bit better. I ended up using those. I put the small ones on first but yeah, it was still, uh, the wheel wasn't spinning that well. All right, turns out that it's kind of just hitting these bits here. It's hitting the rotor on the little bumps. Um, it's hard to see on the other side, but basically what I need to do is just raise these spaces a little bit. So I'm just gonna use the bigger ones and hopefully that'll do it. You can see here, I put the big spaces on and it was clearing. Uh, what I ended up doing was I put the small spaces on top as well so it could align a little bit better and I used slightly longer bolts to make sure it was, uh, wasn't going to pop off. But yeah, you can see here moving around the bike on my <laughs> balcony is a little bit cumbersome. Um, here putting on the rear mech, uh, wasn't too much of that. And then I just had to adjust the limit. You can see it was limited for seven gears. So I'd just to loosen one of the limit bolts to make sure it reaches the eighth gear. All right, so I'm pretty uh, pretty excited to <laughs> put the brakes on today, the V brakes, but I feel like there's gonna be a problem with this, so we'll see how it goes. So taking the <laughs> these brake calipers out from the vapor rust, I actually left these on in for like three days, but yeah, it's fine, no issues. Give it a clean up, and then you can see when I put it on here, it kind of hits the hits the rack mount a little bit, just on the bottom. It wasn't too bad, so I decided just to lace it up. Um, but you can see when I was lacing it up, it was easy just to take the basket off anyway. And then just hooked up the brake, just cut a new cable. Decided to go black this time. Um, reused the same cable. But yeah, you can see it's working well, even with it touching. So I'm just gonna run it like that, see how it goes for now. And then I can change it at a later date if I don't like it. And then just install the rear mat cable, uh, standard cable, standard brand new cable works well. So yeah, 200 centimeters long. All right, this is basically how it goes for extra cycle. I put it under this thing. On top felt a little bit tight, so it just goes under and then just connects like normal all the way up to the top. All right, so I decided to chuck a new chain on. Um, hopefully it goes all right. 
Hopefully the rings aren't too worn. I think it should be fine, but you never know. So I'm gonna put this new chain on and I have a feeling it's not gonna be long enough. So I do have some new, other new chain bits. So hopefully there'll be enough links to kind of link it up. So yeah, just link it up like that. Don't try this at home. All right, so basically join it all up and got it spaced out. I don't know if you can see that, but I just have to join that up, give it one extra link, just like a normal chain. Biggest chain ring on the front, biggest chain ring on the back, just bypass everything, and then size it up, and then loop it through, add one extra link, and then it should be good. I think doing the chain was probably one of the bigger challenges of this project just because I had to join up all those links. I think if you had two kind of brand new chains, it would be way easier. You just have to link it up once. And then yeah, just sizing it out, making sure it didn't slip off was a little bit tricky as well. But you can see after I joined it on, it ended up working pretty well. Um, I was surprised that the chain line was super straight and there was no other things that I had to kind of fix to get it working. Um, and then running the friction shifter Obviously, it was easy to it was easy to uh, just change gears. Really, just have to set the limit screws on both sides. But yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad after that, and worked pretty well. All right, so it's basically finished, and I'm just waiting for the cables to check the cables on. But it dawned on me on how I can actually get this out of the apartment because <laughs> it's so big now. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll, I'll work out something maybe take the front wheel off or yeah i don't know okay so i just measured the elevator and it goes to right there so it might be able to fit if i uh just turn the front wheel like this don't know about the bar sticking out in the basket but yeah i guess I guess we'll see <laughs> Yeah, if anyone's wondering how long an extra cycle is, it's probably, I'd say, 220, 220 long. I might end up having to take the front basket off to get it out, but yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, these cables came today, so fingers crossed, gonna try them out, hopefully they work. Here connecting the wheel cable you can see this went in real easy but then the other side didn't fit for some reason even though it's lining up the arrows so i was like what the hell and then i just thought maybe you know the switch stuff is always a little bit backwards so i switched the cable and end up working and up fitting pretty well so we'll see how it goes and then with the throttle i've already re rewired the throttle for, in another video um but that is connected sweet Putting on the battery pack, I clipped it in well, it's working. And then moment of the truth. Yeah, it works. Yeah, I was super stoked when it worked. Didn't have to rewire anything or anything like that. And then here, just lacing up the cables. I skipped a bit of that, it took me a little bit, but you can see how it goes here. It goes from the back all the way up. I tidy up the cables here underneath the kit and then just Put a little zip tie there. You can see the pedal sensor goes down the seat tube, pretty straight. Just a zip tie right there as well. And then just behind that little bolt. And then here along the top tube, I put the three cables. Uh, I think, you know, this is basically as neat as you're going to get it. Not much more you can do. And then just a little Velcro strap there for the front fork. And then yeah, this is kind of how it looks. I think it's pretty decent. I still got to put a little bit of black tape on this uh, this bit that I fixed before when I rewired the throttle. But I think after that, I might uh, yes yeah, cinch those together or something. And I think it should be looking good. But yeah, pretty happy with this. Um, I can also just turn this down. I think this is what I probably end up how I end up. I'm uh, gonna ride it, just turn it down a little bit so it's not in the way. But yeah, I won't know until I start riding it a bit more. And then here, just chucking on the bags, all washed. Um, I had to fix up some of the clips, but other than that, it went on pretty, pretty easily.
But yeah, looking good. I did the other side as well, of course. Put the board on, the board was just clip on. And then just taking the basket off. And then place the seat as well. And we're all ready to go. Super psyched with how this turned out, rides super well, rides just like a normal bike. I know a lot of people say that, but yeah, it definitely does, and it's way lighter than I thought as well. Taking the weight off the front was really good, really like that. It really changes the handling and makes it just more whippy, feel a little bit more weightless. And I think without the basket on the front, I can always chuck it back on, but I feel like I'm gonna carry so much stuff on the back anyway. You can see what it looks like here with the basket on. And yeah, I got a heaps more plan for this bike. I wanna build a kid's seat, fix up the bags a bit more, maybe build a custom stand but definitely more upgrades in the future i didn't put in this video because otherwise the video would be way too long shout out to people who bought shirts stickers and like my stuff appreciate all you guys thanks for all the support and i will catch you in the next video peace